is my privilege and pleasure to introduce a person who's become a dear friend, an older sister for me, a guide, a mentor, all of those, uh, Professor Shashi Prabha Kumar, uh, who's the chairperson of uh, the Institute for Advanced Study here in Shimla, and a very distinguished uh, Sanskrit scholar, uh, who's also held very important leadership positions, including uh, the founder, vice chancellor of the Sanchi University of Buddhist Indic Studies in Madhya Pradesh, uh, and many, many other institutions. She's currently uh, a distinguished fellow of the Vivekananda mm -hmm. International Foundation and dean of the Shankaracharya Sanskrit mm -hmm. Mahavidyalaya uh, in, uh, in Delhi. She has had fellowships at the uh, Center for Hindu Studies at Oxford, uh, where she was a Shivdasani fellow. That is something that we share. Uh, I also got the Black Scholarship, so I didn't realize that when I looked into a bio today, I realized that. Um, and then the ICCR visiting chair at Shilpa Karan, uh, University in Bangkok, and uh, many other uh, uh, such positions. She's been, um, she's been uh, uh, recognized with the, KK, with the Shankar Puraskar of the KK Birla Foundation, the Ramakrishna Sanskrit Award from the Canadian World Foundation, World Education Foundation, and many others. She has an honorary D-Lit by Uttarakhand Sanskrit University, and uh, 37 books and 150 research papers over to you, Professor Kumar. We'd love to hear the distilled essence of 50 years of teaching in this. Table don't need a manager. I'll begin with a Vedic invocation which has been my practice. Om Hadram Karne Bhigishno Yama Deva Hadram Pashe Maksha Bhiriya Jatra Stirai Rangai Stushto Van Sastanu Hirvya Shemahi Deva Hitam Yadayuhu Om Shanti 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 May we hear with our ears whatever is noble and good. May we see with our eyes that with whatever is pleasant to us. And may we live our full life protected by divine grace. With this prayer, I would like to thank Professor Shailendra Raj Mehtaji for conceiving of this workshop, for organizing it. And I am thankful to all the distinguished scholars from India and abroad who have made it possible to reach here despite so many difficulties due to weather conditions, other problems. I thank you all. I am especially thankful to Professor Ramnath Jha, who just spoke before me. He is like a son to me. And I, have, I was teaching when he was a student at Delhi University. Then we were colleagues at Jawaharlal Nehru University for so many years. So he has made my task easier. But friends, he had taken you to the top floor of the building and I bring you back to the root, to the ground. Because I am in a, I belong to the ancient generation. I haven't been trained to the Navinyaya. So I belong to Prachina Nyaya. And that to Vaisheshika. But many of the terms and concepts they have intermingled with Nyaya in such a manner that they cannot be separated. Like the terms Professor Mishra yesterday and Professor Jha today, they were using Dharma and Dharmi. These are the terms devised in Vaisheshika. But Nyaya and Vaisheshika, they are known as sister schools, like Samkhya and Yoga and Mimamsa and Vedanta. So I am standing here not because I am a Nyaya scholar, but because I am a student of Vaisheshika, which is a sister of Nyaya. And I am thankful to you, Professor Mehta, for calling me a sister. You have made me emotional with these remarks. Thank you. So I will try to do an introduction to my talk. Because yesterday and today, Professor Mehta has repeatedly been saying that we want something which can be 
useful for today's life. So Nyaya and the world. Although I had given my topic as Nyaya Vaisheshika Theism, but that will be the later part of my talk. In the first part, I would like to say that Nyaya has different names. You all, my Sanskrit scholars, must be knowing all these names. But this is for those who do not know Sanskrit, who have not been introduced to Nyaya. So there are many names from ancient times, like Anvikshiki. Most of you must be knowing Anvikshiki in Kautilya and also in Nyaya Bhashya. Anviksha and Anvikshaya Pravartate iti Anvikshi. What is Anviksha? Anu Iksha. After investigation. So that has, whatever has been investigated, pratyaksha gama bhyam, pratyaksha anumana bhyam, ikshitasya anuviksha. We have already introduced ourselves to perception and anumana. These are the two very, very popular means or processes of cognition. After that, whatever proceeds is known as anvikshiti. Anviksha is pratyakshanumana bhyam ikshitam taya pravartate iti anvikshiki. So anvikshiki is the oldest name and it is said that pradipaha sarva vidyanam upayaha sarva karmanam. So nyaya or anvikshiki is very very beneficial. It's like a lamp which enlightens everything, which illuminates everything around it. Pradipaha sarva vidyanam Upayaha Sarva Karmana. All our activities can be made easy if we apply the knowledge of Nyaya, if we light the lamp of Nyaya. Ashrayaha Sarva Dharmana Shashvad Anvikshiki Mata. So Anvikshiki is a science. This is a branch of learning which is very, very useful. There is another name, Tarka which is interchangeably used in the tradition. Vada Vidya, because it focuses on Vada or debate. Hetu Vidya, because Hetu or reason is very, very important in Anumana, in the process of Anumana. Pramana Shastra, because just now Professor Jha mentioned, Pramana is the primary focus of Nyaya Shastra. Sixteen Padarthas have been enumerated, but Pramana is the primary focus of Nyaya. And as we all know, the schools of these orthodox Indian philosophy, they were all propounded by the seers, the rishis. Nyaya was propounded by Maharshi Gautama. Akshapada was his another name. And it is a legend that Akshapada, Aksha means eyes, Pada in his fit. So he was provided with eyes in his fit because he was so engrossed in thinking and contemplation that sometimes he forgot and he fell down. So the divine grace was on him and he was provided with a sight in his feet. So Akshapada, Mithila was his origin place, just as Professor Jha hails from Mithila. So Gautama, Akshapada and Nyaya Shastra Pravartaka, Maharshi Gautama. Now, Nyaya, the term Nyaya, Nyaya is very popular. These are all synonyms of Nyaya, Anvikshiki, Tarka, Vada Vidya, Hetu Vidya, Pramana Shastra. But Nyaya became the most popular in convention. What is Nyaya? Niyate Anena Iti Nyaya. You see, we Sanskritists are very fortunate that we can split the term and reach at its meaning. So, Niyate Anena Iti Nyaya. Nyaya is the way or the path which takes us further. So if we have to go somewhere, we can employ this Nyaya. Nyaya is a way, a road, a path, a tool. And Nyaya can be of two types. Shastra Nyaya we have been discussing since yesterday. But the term Nyaya has been used in another sense also that is Laukika Nyaya. I am not sure if many of you know about the Nyaya Kosha. It's such a voluminous text compiled by Bhimacharya Jhalakikar, published from Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute in 1928. And this Nyaya Kosha has given many senses, many connotations of the term Nyaya. One of them is 
Lokashastra Prasiddha Drishtanta Vishesha. This is in the sense of maxim. So, Nyaya is also popular in the sense of maxim. These maxims can again be of two types, Laukika Nyaya and Shastra Nyaya. So, I will come to the Shastra Nyaya later, but first I will give you some examples of the Laukika Nyaya. There is a book called Laukika Nyayanjali published by Colonel A. Jacob, which I think it has more than 100 Nyayas which, were, which are employed. And there are Shastriya Nyayas in Mimamsa and Vedanta about which Professor Bimili will be speaking. But I will just give you examples. For Laukika Nyaya, we have Sthali Pulaka Nyaya, Aja Kripani Nyaya, then Andha Upa Patana Nyaya, Gand Andha Chataka Nyaya, Andha Pangu Nyaya, which is used in Sankhya to explain the complementarity of Prakriti and Purusha. So there are many like Laukika Nyaya, that way Nyaya is useful and very, very popularly being practiced in our day-to-day -day life without even studying the Nyaya Shastra. People in India have been using these Nyaya, isn't it? Gunakshara Nyaya. So, in Hindi, we also say that the gehu is also a gunna. Ahi kundala nyaya, ahi nakula nyaya, saap or nyavaleka. So, these are some of the laukika nyaya. And for shastra nyaya, we have adhya ropa nyaya, we have suchi kataha nyaya, we have like kadamba mukula nyaya and vichi taranga nyaya. When the vaisheshikas and the nayaikas explain the origin of word or sound, shabda. They employ these two examples. One is that the word or sound travels in a circular way. Kadamba mukula nyaya. Or it moves in a virtual way, in a linear way. And that is vichi taranga nyaya. So all the examples are taken from nature. That is another beauty of it. All these examples for these maxims are collected from our day-to-day -day life and mainly from the nature, animals, birds, rivers, mountains, trees, etc. So with this introduction, can we now come to the next Shastra Nyaya or Gautamiya Nyaya. It has been introduced, it has been explained yesterday and today, but this Gautamiya Nyaya, the definition given by Vatsyayana, Pramanaihi Artha Parikshanam Nyaya, Nyaya is that which parikshana investigates into the nature of artha. Artha is the object. Padartha, as I said yesterday, pada is the name and artha is the object or the meaning. Artha also denotes meaning. Artha is also the object, vishaya, prasiddha indriyartha. So says Gautama in his Nyaya Sutra. How many padarthas? They are 16 according to Gautama, Pramana, Prameya, Sanshaya, Prayojana, etc. They are 6 or 7 according to Kanada, the Vaisheshika Pravartaka, propounder of the Vaisheshika. And these have not been mentioned, so I will just mention them. Dravya, Guna, Karma, Samanya, Vishesha, Samavaya and Abhav. 7 Padarthas of Vaisheshika. Professor Jha has also already mentioned about some of these Vaisheshika Padartha. For example, he has explained Abhav. He has also explained Jati. Jati is Samanya. So the concepts and the terms, they were intermingled in both these traditions. But when we trace the history of these twin schools, originally they were separate. Nyaya was propounded by Maharshi Gautama, Vaisheshika by Maharshi Kranada. And up to a certain period, they developed and grew separately. I will give you five major texts of ancient Nyaya. Up to that period, Nyaya was separate. First is the Sutra by Gautama. And mind you, these are technical terms of Indian philosophy. Sutra, Bhashya, Vartika. Tika, Sangra, they have been defined, their Lakshanas are available and they are used across the schools. Every Indian philosophical school 
they will have sutra as the earliest text. Sutra is very brief. It is not easy to decipher the meaning. So Bhashya is, it follows. Bhashya is a commentary. Like Gautama's Nyaya Sutra hai, a Bhashya by Vatsyayana. Brahma Sutra by Vadarayana has a Bhashya by Shankara and many others. Kanada's Vaisheshika Sutras actually, the Bhashya is lost. But now Anandalal Thakur has searched and published a Bhashya with the name of Vaisheshika. But it is Prashastapada Bhashya which became very popular. Although it is technically not correct to call it a Bhashya. So the Nyaya literature from Gautama Sutra we go to Vatsyayana's Bhashya. Even when the time passes there is certain changes in the understanding and there are certain objections, additions and revisions. So Bhashya was followed in almost all the schools, Vartika. Vartika is also a type of text in Indian tradition. I can't go into the definitions but they are all available on net. Vartika, Nyaya Vartika was written by Udyotakara to whom a reference was just made. After Vartika comes Tika. That is Nyaya Vartika Tatparya Tika by Vachaspati Mishra. His name was also referred. So Sutra, Gautama Sutra, Bhashya, Vatsyayana Bhashya, Vartika, Udyotakaracharya, Tika, Vachaspati Mishra. And last but not the least, where I want to stop, that is Udayanacharya, Nyaya Vartika Tatparya Tika Parishuddhi. And Udayana is not an ordinary scholar. Since yesterday too, you have been listening the name of Jayanta Bhatta. He was a stalwart in the tradition of Nyaya. But Udayana was no less than him. Udayana has contributed a lot to the tradition of Nyaya Vaisheshika and also to the tradition of Indian philosophy. So I am really fan of Udayana, a student of being student of Vaisheshika. I'll tell you what Udayana has contributed. Udayana began the trends for Navya to which you just heard an exposition by Professor Jha. It was Udayana, he was not the propounder of Navya but the trends of Navya were set in motion by Udayana Chaya. He was the bridge between the Prachina Nyaya and the Navya Nyaya. It was in 10th century that he was in Mithila. So, he was a bridge in between the Prachina Nyaya and Navya Nyaya. He was the one who tried the amalgam, not only tried, he made it possible, the amalgamation of Nyaya and Vaisheshika. Just look at the books that he has authored. Nyaya Vartika Tatparya Tika Parishuddhi I already mentioned. Then he wrote Kiranavali on the Prashastapada Bhashya of Vaisheshika. Parishuddhi on Nyaya. Kiranavali on Vaisheshika, Lakshanavali on Vaisheshika, Lakshanamala on Nyaya. These are two on Nyaya, two on Vaisheshika. But then he wrote Atma Tattva Viveka, which, is an, which has another name, Baudha Dhikara or Baudha Dhikara. This is in repudiation of the Buddhist arguments against no soul theory. Atma Tattva Viveka. This is a text which belongs to both the Nyaya and Vaisheshika. This is neither exclusively of Nyaya or Vaisheshika. Similarly, the most important text that he authored is Nyaya Kusumanjali. And that is the theistic text he has authored. This is Nyaya Kusumanjali. And this is for proving the existence of God. This was written in a response to a text which is a Buddhist text and that is known as Ishwara Bhanga Karika, refutation of God. This was written by a Buddhist scholar and Udayana responded to that by writing this text, Nyaya Kusumanjali. But before I come to that part of my talk, that is theism, let me begin, finish the contribution of Udayana. He was the one who proved the existence of Atman by writing a text, Atma Tattva Viveka. And mind you, all these texts authored by Udayana have many commentaries on them. A series of commentaries 
that is the beauty of indian philosophical tradition each school has a seed text and upon it a bhashya vartika tika up to that we have one 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 but after that there are lots of commentaries we call them upatika vritti or whatever and a time comes when both of them have amalgamated in such a way that some small text we call them prakaran granthas like tarka sangraha tarka bhasha bhasha parichhed these are the primary texts for beginners who want to get introduced with nyaya vaisheshika these are taught in the syllabi for ba and ma tarka sangraha tarka bhasha and the bhasha parichhed then he proved the existence of god by writing this book nyaya kusumanjali but the proofs are given in the last section of this book the fifth chapter the fourth chap four chapters of this book they are in response to different objections raised by five schools that is charvaka buddhist jaina mimamsa and sankhya so first he gives full details this is another <coughs> very important trait of indian philosophy that they honestly give full space full space to the opponent first they will give full freedom and they will describe the theories the objections raised by them and then they will come prepared and one by one they will just refute and say this is my theory this is my response next you just heard the types of abhava it was udayana in the tradition of nyaya and vaisheshika who first mentioned abhava as a padartha in an explicit manner in his text lakshanavali he says padartha dvividha bhava abhava bheda before that abhava was not accepted clearly as a seventh category in the tradition of vaisheshika so udayana credit goes to udayana for adding of abhava padartha in the tradition and the last one he also refutes the objections of buddhist against the jati or samanya accepted by nyaya vaisheshika and he has also proved and supported the parabanu vada the atomic theory of vaisheshika there was a very strong objection against vaisheshika theory of atomism that you do not have any scriptural support for this this is merely based on inference anumana pratyaksha is not possible in case of paramanus and anumana alone cannot be strong enough so you don't have any agama pramana in support of that but it was udayana who quoted the verse that was recited yesterday by professor chachidananda mishra विश्वतश चक्षु ऋत विश्वतो मुखो एंड इन द सेकंड लाइन इट सेज सम बाहुभ्याम धमति संपतत्रयी द्यावा भूमि जनयन देव एक एंड उदयना हिमसेल्फ एक्सप्लेन्स दैट संपतत्रयी इट इज इन प्लूरल नंबर एंड संपतन्तीति संपतत्राणि इवन अ बर्ड इज कॉल्ड पतत्र बिकॉज़ इट हैज द विंग्स एंड इट फॉल्स डाउन इट फ्लोज इट फ्लाइज sampatatra here udayana says the vedic verse is suggesting parmanu because the parmanu is the minute particles they are running in the atmosphere they are all there and god creates the world with the help of these sampatatra or parmanu i come to that later when i discuss god that god is only the efficient cause or the nimitta karana paramanus are the material cause or the upadana karana of the world so this and udayana is also credited with two very beautiful verses you see when we use verses in poetry they are known as shloka or padya but then with these verses are employed in the shastra the technical name for them is karika so udayana has given us two very very important karikas and the students of nyaya they all remember by heart one is the jati badha ka sangraha jati badha ka the buddhist refute the concept of jati or samanya but udayana has proved its existence 
but he agrees that there are certain cases where this concept of jati does not apply. Those are known as jati vadhaka. And he has put them all together in a verse, in a karika. Similarly, for proving the existence of God, he has given eight arguments and all those eight arguments are collected in a single verse. This is known as Ishwara Siddhi Karika. So Udayana has contributed to the corpus of Indian philosophical tradition a lot. Much needs to be done in this regard. But before I come to the theory of God, I would like to read what he says in the first chapter of Nyaya Kusumandir. You see, you have heard just now that there are four pramanas, pratyaksha, anumana, upamana, and shabda. Perception, inference, analogy, and verbal authority. Out of these, there are certain objects or concepts which cannot be perceived. Paramanus cannot be perceived. Jati or samanya cannot be perceived independently. It can be perceived with the help of the vyakti. So, like that, God is not an object of perception. He says, even though it is not perceptible, there is no doubt about the existence of God because he is a devotee, he is a theist, or theist. But before I men read what he says, there is a legion, a popular legion, that being a core theist, being a repudiator of the Buddhist objections against God, it happened that once he reached a temple and the doors of the temple were closed and Udayana challenges God. He says, Aishwarya Mada Mattosi, Mama Vajjaya Tishthasi. Now you are feeling proud of yourself and you are ignoring me, my presence. Who am I? Samayateshu Baudheshu Madadhina Tavasthiti. Let the Buddhists come and you will be nowhere. It is I, I am the one who has established that you are there, you exist. And now I come to see you and you have closed your doors. So this is a legion, I don't know how much true it is, but it is a popular one. Aishwarya madamattosi mamavajjyaya tishthasi samayateshu baudheshu madadina tavasthiti. That is a not very authentic one, but now I quote from the First chapter of Nyaya Kusumanjali, what he says about God. Iha yadyapi yam kamapi purushartham arthamanaha shuddha buddha swabhava itya upanishadaha. The Upanishads quote him shuddha buddha swabhava. He is pure, he is in the form of knowledge. Adi vidvan siddha iti kapilaha. The Sankhyas do not accept God as a creator. But Adi Vidwan Siddha. Klesha karma vipakasha yai rapara mrishto nirmana kaya madhishthaya sampradaya pradyotako no grahakashcheti patanjala. The Yoga Sutra accepts God as the first guru. That is Klesha karma vipakasha yai rapara mrishta purusha vishesha ishvara. Yoga Sutra. Loka Veda Virudhai Rapi Nirlepaha Swatantra Sheti Mahapashupata. Yadyapi the Mahapashupatas do not accept Veda, but they say that God is Nirlepa and Swatantra. Shiva iti Shaivaha Purushottama iti Vaishnavaha. It's clear. Pitamaha iti Paurani Kaha Yajya Purusha iti Yajikaha. Sarvajya iti saugataha. The Buddhists accept Sarvajya Buddha. Nira varana iti digambaraha. The Jainas. Upasya tvena deshita iti mimam sakaha. Loka vyavahara siddha iti charva kaha. Yava dukto papanna iti nayayi kaha. We'll come to that later. Kim bahuna yam karavopi. Vishwa Karmetyupasate. Even the technicians or the carpenters, they upasate, they worship him as Vishwa Karma. Tasmin evam jati gotra pravana pravara charana kula dharma divad asansaram 
सुप्रसिद्धानुभवे भगवती भवे संदेह एव कुतः Everybody is accepting God in one form or the other. So where is the doubt? Sandeha eva kuta. Bhagavati bhave sandeha eva kuta. Kim nirupaniyam. Why should I deliberate upon this? Tathapi. Even then I am venturing upon this. And this was also quoted yesterday by Vishraji. Nyaya charche amisha sya manana vyapadesha bha upasanaiva kriyate shravana anantara. What I am trying to do? This is Nyaya Charcha of Ishwara Manana Vyapadeshabha. Shravana Manana and Nidityasana. These are the three steps in Indian tradition. It is said that to know the ultimate reality, you have to follow these three steps. Shravana, listen first. Manana, contemplate, reflect upon it. And then Nidityasana. So he is saying, I am just doing Manana. This charcha pertains to manana only and that is because the Upanishad says, he is quoting that Shrotavyo, Mantavyo, Nidhyasitavyo. So this much about his prayojana. Why he is doing this? Why he is writing this text for proving the existence of God? But because, before we go to that, let us just think, what are the roles for God? You see, in Indian philosophy, we have six orthodox schools and three heterodox, so to say. Out of the six astika schools, Sankhya, Mimamsa, and Vaisheshika, they do not accept God, or they do not mention God, I should say. They do not require God for the sake of creation. They do not explain the nature or role of God in their sutras or their literature. Even then, they are astika. Why? Because Manu says, nastiko vedanindaka. What is the criteria for astika and nastika? Those who believe in the authority of Veda are astikas, and those who do not believe, rather they repudiate Vedas, they are known as nastika. So, Charvaka, Jaina, and Buddhist are classified as nastika, and these six schools, out of which Three do not accept God, even then they are astika. And those who accept God, they are, Nyaya is one of them, Vedanta is one of them, and Yoga is also one of them. But Yoga accepts the metaphysics provided by Sankhya, so they do not require God for creating the world. They only require God for Ishwara Pranidhana Dva in the form of the first teacher, Adi Guru, and also as a, but as a center of worship, center of meditation, this is said, Ishwara Pranidhana Dva, as a the goal of surrender. To whom we can surrender, that is Ishwara. So the role of God in yoga is limited. But the role of God in Nyaya Vaisheshika, Vaisheshika came later, because as I said in the original sense, Vaisheshika was separate. They don't mention God in clear terms. It is only Udayana who is writing a separate independent text for proving the existence of God. See the integrity and honesty of these scholars. When he is writing a commentary on the Vaisheshika, Prashastapada Bhashya, he does not mention God as a separate category. Because even Prashastapada he describes the Srishti Sanghara Prakriya, but they do not count it in the Padartha. What was done? Paramatma or Ishwar was counted as a subgroup or subdivision of Atma. So Atma Dvividha Jivatma Paramatma. Jivatma Bahavah Santi Vatmana Bahavah Santi Alpajyaha Santi Ishwara Ekaha Sarvajya. What is the role of Ishwara? First role is creator God. According to Nyaya Vaisheshika, we require God because he creates the world. Why? That I will explain. Second is author of the Vedas. According to Mimamsa, God is not required because for them, world is not created, never created. It is Anadi Pravaha. Srishti and Pralaya goes on since beginning and it will go on like that. 
Therefore, Vedas were never authored by anyone, not even by God. But Nyaya Vaisheshikas, being realists, they argue that the world is created by God, the Vedas are authored by God, just like any other book is created by, authored by a human being. And third, God is the controller of Adrishta. What is Adrishta? The results of our actions, Punya and Papa. Whatever we are doing, good deeds or bad deeds, who keeps the account and control? It is God. So triple roles are assigned to God in Nyaya Vaisheshika scheme of the things. He is the creator, he is the author of Veda, and he is the controller of Adrishta. Right? Now, the first question is whether this world is a product. Is it created or is it going on like this? And even if it is created, is it created by chance or is there a design to it? Is there a cause for it? According to Charvaka, there is no cause to anything. Everything happens by chance. There are mentioned in the Shweta Shvatar Upanishad, Kala Swabhavo Niyatihi Yadricha. Either Kala is the Hetu for everything. Everything happens according to time, Kala, Swabhava. It's all natural. Everything is happening. This rain is happening. It is by nature. Niyati. It was destined to be like that. So Niyati. Niyati Vada. Swabhava Vada. Kala Vada. And last is Yadricha Vada. By chance. Akasmika. Sanyoga. So these are the four types of explanations given by those who do not accept the relation between cause and effect. Those who do not accept the theory of causality, according to them, this world can be explained by any of these Kalavada, Swabhavavada, Niyativada or Yadrichavada. But the Nyaya Vaisheshikas, according to them, there is a theory of causation. And every effect, every product has a cause. So Karya is the product, it is the effect which is caused by its own precedent cause. Karana is precedent and Karya is the, Karana, or, I'm sorry, Karana is the earlier one, the precedent, and Karya is the antecedent. So Karya, Karana gives rise to Karya. Karya is caused by the destruction of its own pragabhava. Beautiful definition of Karya, Karyam, Praga Bhava Prati Yogi. Abhava is of four types. Out of those four, first is Praga Bhava. Whatever is not yet produced, that object has its Praga Bhava. For example, you see, some new model of car, electric cars are coming, but some automatic cars are now being created. Tesla has already brought one. But there are many other models which are yet to be produced. We have their Pragabhava. Prior non-existence. Right? So Pragabhava. Earlier it was not there. Whatever did not exist is created and its non-existence is abolished. So what is Karya? Karya is the Pratiyogi. It is the opposite of its own Pragabhava. This is the definition of Karya and which is acceptable to Nyaya and Vaisheshika both. Now, how does a Karya get produced? Is It's not acceptable to Nyaya Vaisheshika that it is produced by chance or by nature or by destiny. There has to be a design. There is a perfect design. Everything is fixed for every. Every effect has certain causes. Three types of cause. You have heard the definition of karana, prama karana, pramana. But before karana, we have karana. Karana is cause. Karana is the specific cause. Karana is the ultimate. But right now we are discussing the causes. There are many types of causes which are required. For creating this glass, what do we require? First of all, we require the material. The glass, the plastic or a metal, whatever. So material cause, that is known as Samavai Karana in Nyaya Vaisheshika. In Vedanta, it is known as Upadana Karana. 
in Vaisheshika and Nyaya, it is Samavai Karana, the material. And then Asamavai Karana, the properties residing in that material. Suppose this glass is made of a metal, steel. What properties are there in steel? All those properties, the color, the size, the design, all these are the properties and these are the Asamavai Karana. Efficient cause, sorry, material cause and non-inherent cause. Inherent cause, Samavai Karana. Non-inherent cause, Asamavai Karana. Now material is given. The whole bunch of material is lying in the factory. The material is provided, the machines are set, the design, a die is made, everything is okay. But what do we require for creation? Can it be created? Although nowadays many things are happening, automatic robots are being created. But are these robots created by the, on their own? Some human being, some human agency, some conscious agent has to be there. This is the logic of Nyaya Vaisheshika theory of causation. There has to be a nimitta karana, an efficient cause. And that efficient cause, in worldly products, it can be a human being. But for creating this whole world, no human being is capable. Therefore, we need somebody who knows everything. You see, if I am writing a book, what should I know? What should I know? I should at least know the topic, the subject, the available material. If similarly, if somebody, some engineer is creating a car, he should know the designs, the materials, the available models of that car. <coughs> similarly, if somebody has to create this world, he should not only know the world, but even more than that. So, no ordinary human being can create this world. This much we know from our own experience. We haven't seen anybody who has created this world. If we had seen, then there was no necessity for argument. That would have been practical. So, it is inferred, anuman, that there has to be a sarvajya karta. Somebody who knows everything, who is omniscient and omnipotent, and that is God. So this theory of cause and effect, three types of karana, samavai, asamavai, and nimitta. The same samavai karana, which is known as samavai in Nyaya Vaisheshika, is known as upadana in Vedanta. In Vedanta, Brahman itself is the upadana, he himself is the nimitta. Abhinna nimitto padana karana. This is the theory of Vedanta. But Vaisheshikas and Nayayakas, they are realists. So according to them, Samavai is material cause. Asamavai is the properties and the activity pertaining to that material. And efficient cause or nimitta karana is separate. That is God. Okay. This is about the nature of God. Now what is the relation between cause and effect? You have heard about dharma and dharmi. Dharmi is the product, is the substance. Dharma is the property or the guna. And there is a sambandha. So what is the relation between cause and effect? According to Sankhya and Vedanta, no relation is required because cause and effect are identical. They are tadatma. So what is the relation? Tadatma. For Buddhists, they don't accept any sambandha. Actually, a grantha is written sambandha pariksha, where the refutation of sambandha, ref, like that Ishwara bhanga karika, refutation of the principle of God. But here in Nyaya Vaisheshika, they are two different entities. Cause is different and effect is different. The example, popular example is given of milk and curd. You see, according to Sankhya, milk transforms into curd. Curd was unmanifest and it gets manifested. That is what Karya Karana Bhav in Sankhya. According to them, Nyaya and Vaisheshika, they are different. And the properties of milk are different, properties of curd are different. That is proved by the medical science today. Even in Ayurveda, it is different. The properties of milk, milk is not digestible to many, but curd is digestible to them. 
So same happens today also. The doctors say if you can't digest milk, take curd. So means properties are different. There is a change. So cause and effect are different, but they are related. Related by a relation which is inseparable relation. Because we cannot create curd out of sand. We have to create, we can create curd out of milk only. We can get oil out of the mustard seeds only, and not out of every seed. So the relation between cause and effect is the relation called samavaya. Professor Jha was given the example of laptop and table. That is the sanyoga sambandha. But what is the relation between the wood and the table? If you want to separate, the computer can be removed and was removed by Martin for a while. But wood cannot be separated from the table until you break the table. This is an inseparable relation, inherent, samavadya. And on it is based the theory of asamavai and samavai karma. There is no debate right now possible regarding samavai and asamavai, but we come to the nimitta karma. Now, do we require somebody as an efficient cause, as a karta, to create the world? Now they give an example and an anumana. Yesterday we discussed how, what is the structure of anumana. So they give an anumana and Udayana has quoted it. Kshityadikam sakartrikam. Kshiti adi, this earth, etc., has an agent, has a karta. Kshityadikam sakartrikam. This is the pratijyavakya. First statement is what do we want to prove? We want to prove that the earth, etc., all the products for that matter, they have a karta. Right? What is the reason? How can you say that? Karyatva, the hetu, the reason. Because they all are karya, they all are product. And Gita said, whatever is produced, that has to perish. So this is the popular theory, karya and karana, that karya perishes, then it is born again. And karana, it stays in the form of karana, but they are, because they are different. It's not that karya merges in karana and gets manifested again like the Sankhya model. The Sankhya theory of causation is known as Satkarya Vada. That karya is already pre-existent in the karana. Nyaya Vaisheshika theory is Asatkarya Vada. That karya was not present in its karana in the name and form that it is now produced. This is the difference. So we need a karta. We need an efficient cause to create the world. Shityadikam sakartrikam karyatvat. What is the example? Any example can be given. Ghatavat, patavat, sanganatavat, vahanavat. All the things that we see in the world are being produced by someone some conscious agent. Therefore, we have to posit, we have to infer that there is a sarvajya karta because asmadadi sadrishaha karta jagat srashta na bhavitum shaknoti. None of us can create the world, so we need a god. We have to postulate god. This is the theory of inference for proving god. Pratyaksha is not possible to prove the existence of god. Only two pramanas are possible. First is inference or nyaya and next is shabda. And there are plenty of scriptural statements to prove the existence of God. So for those who believe in those scriptures, astikas, for them there is, as Vyana has himself said, there is no need to prove the existence of God for those who already believe in him and worship him. But there are some who do not believe in these scriptures. So it is for them to convince them, although they are convinced or not, is a matter of contradiction and debate. But the Nayaikas are famous for debate. They have set the rules of debate. They are ready to debate and argue. That is a separate issue. So Udayana has given eight arguments for proving the existence of God too technical to go into the five objections that have been raised by the Purva Bhakshins. So I will just give you those eight arguments that Udayana gives. And these are 
कारिका आई विल रिसाइट फर्स्ट कार्या योजन धृत्या देहे पदार्थ प्रत्यय तह श्रुते है वाक्या संख्या विशेषाच्च साध्यो विश्वविदव्य साध्यो विश्वविदव्य द लास्ट पार्शन पोर्शन ऑफ द वर्स इज विश्ववित द वन हु नोज अ होल वर्ल्ड विश्ववित सर्वज्ञ अव्यय द वन हु नेवर पेरिशेस अव्यय अक्षर अविनाशी विश्ववित अव्यय साध्य ही कैन बी प्रूव हाउ कैन ही बी प्रूव एट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स एंड ऑल दीज एट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर गिवन इन पंचमी विभक्ति आई टोल्ड यस्टरडे दैट वेन एवर वी हैव टू गिव अ रीजन वी हैव टू कोट वी हैव टू गिव अ आर्ग्यूमेंट फॉर प्रूविंग समथिंग वी यूज दी डिक्लेंशन पंचमी विभक्ति अपादान सो कार्य आयोजन धृत्या दे पंचमी बट थ्री ऑफ देम आर क्लब इन दिस स्टेटमेंट थ्री आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर क्लब कार्य फर्स्ट आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन the anumana in the form of kshityadikam sakartrikam what is the hetu karya karyatva is the first argument for proving the existence of god we have to accept that jagat this world is a karya this world is a product do we accept or do we not this we don't we are not going to prove we know that this world is a product we are because we are seeing so many new things being produced isn't it we see that the old things are getting extinguished the old persons are dying the new ones are being born old things are getting destroyed and abolished new things are coming the prachina nyaya is gone in oblivion and navya nyaya has taken over this is the cycle of the world and in indian tradition the concept of time is cyclical it goes on like that क्या है उसमें जातस से ही ध्रुव मृत्यु ध्रुवम जन्म मृत सो दिस इज द साइकिल ऑफ क्रिएशन एंड डिसोल्यूशन सो वर्ल्ड इज अ प्रोडक्ट जगत इदम कार्यम सो कार्यत्व हेतु इज द फर्स्ट एंड एज दिस एक्सप्लेन ऑलरेडी दैट फॉर बीइंग अ प्रोडक्ट फॉर गेटिंग प्रोड्यूस्ड दिस वर्ल्ड नीड्स अ क्रिएटर एन एजेंट ए कॉन्शियस एजेंट एन ओमनीशियंट एजेंट and omnipotent entity this is the most popular argument which is given in the western tradition also so karyatva next is ayojana simply we can translate it actually the translation creates many problems for example you raise that false knowledge so knowledge cannot be false in western connotation but in india even vidya is of two types mithya and satya so knowledge can be false and can be true similarly when we say that this jagat is a karya ayojana ayojan is a term which is if we translate in english we will say design or arrangement because in the world everything is so designed so well or organized that there has to be a conscious person who designs and organizes everything in a room even on my table if i do not organize my things there is whole clutter isn't it so we have somebody has to do it either i do or somebody does it for me but some conscious agent has to do it so ayojan simply we can explain it like that but in technical sense it is a different matter that i am not taking you into that ayojan means when the creation starts two parmanus meet and the first vayanaka is produced and that adyam sargadya kalinam dvayanaka janyam sanyogam janayati iti ayojana what is ayojana ayojana is the first contact between two atoms who created that contact <coughs> after the first contact they can move on with the help of the other agents but who was the first the prime mover the prime connector between these two atoms that was god kari ayojan third is dhriti why the sun moon and the planets they are so heavy and they are not falling down even if a bird flies the bird is holding itself it is a conscious bird is a conscious entity it is holding itself if it is carrying a leaf of grass or a branch of tree 
it is being held with the conscious effort of that bird. But if you throw something in the sky, it will fall down. So who is it who is sustaining, holding sun, moon and the planets? That is Dhriti. Gurutva Vatam Patana Bhavaha Dhriti. The elements or the entities which have Gurutva, weight, and they are not falling. That means somebody is holding them. And we have the Veda Mantras, Yo Dadhara Bhuvanani Vishwa. He is the one who is sustaining the whole world. So he is the Dharta. He is the Karta. He is the Vyavasthapaka. And he is the Dharta. So Kaya Ayojana Dhriti. These three are easy to understand. Now the next three, Pada, Pratyaya and Shruti. These three arguments are very specific to Indian tradition because three are based on the Veda. Veda is supreme in Indian knowledge tradition. And for Mimansa, God is not required because Veda is Veda. No God can create Vedas. Vedas are Anadi, Vedas are Apaurushe, Vedas are Nitya. So word, supremacy of word is very, very significant feature of Indian tradition. So much so that even God has to be argued for. But for Vedas, no arguments are required. We are anadi nitya apaushe. So, because the Nayaikas do not accept Vedas to be apaushe. There are two schools. For Mimansa, they are apaushe. For Nyaya, they are apaushe. Just like Mahabharata has been written by Vyasa, any book is written by any of the scholars. Similarly, Veda is authored by God. And the authority, the pratyaya, pratyaya means pramani. Pada means the teaching. Pada, pratyaya, shruti. Pada is same which was in the Yoga Sutra, Adi Shikshaka. Who teaches the original arts and trades, everything? My father taught me, his father taught him, his father taught him. If we go on like that, who was the first teacher of arts, of scriptures, of everything that we are doing today? Because you see a child, a human child is born, and an animal is born. You don't have to teach an animal. It is born and it stands. It starts walking. But for a human child, you have to teach him to stand. You have to teach him to walk. You have to teach him to eat. So there are two types of knowledge, nitya and naimittika. So human being's knowledge is naimittika. It has to be trained. He has to be given, inculcated. Then who is the first inculcator? That is in the pada. Pratyaya is pramanya. Authenticity of Veda is because it is authored by a supreme, divine, omniscient person. And Shruti, Shruti is Veda itself. The Shruti is oral tradition coming from past generations till today. The Shruti, authorship of Vedas, then the authenticity. There are two different pramanas. Pratyaya is pramanya, authenticity, and Shruti is the authorship. They are different. And th next is Vakya. Vakya can be taken as language. Yesterday there was discussion about language. There is a lot of discussion in Nyaya and Vaisheshika about language. Who originated the language? And even if you accept that language was originated on its own, who decided that this word will connote this meaning? Shabdartha Sambandha. Is it Nitya or is it Anitya? According to Mimamsaka, Shabda is Nitya. Shabdartha Sambandha is Nitya. Everything is Nitya. Vedas are Nitya. Srishti is Nitya. But according to Nayaikas, because they believe on the experiences of common people. So everything is produced. Shabdartha Sambandha. They say, Samaikaha Shabdar Artha Sambandha. Samaikaha Shabdar Artha Sampratyaya. Word and its meaning have a relation which is known as Samaya. What is Samaya? Samaya is not time here. Samaya is a technical term. What is Samaya? And it is said in Nyaya, Asmat padat ayam artho bodhavya 
iti ishwar echa sanketa vishesha samaya. This word will convey this meaning. This has been given, suggested by God, and this is known as samaya. So, shabdad artha sampraktiya is samaika. That means God decided, God created language. God decided the connotation, the relation between word and meaning in the first place. So, vakya. And last argument is air sankhya vishesha. That is also very, very technical. That pertains to vaisheshika theory of dvitva or vaisheshika theory of creation. According to vaisheshika, number or sankhya is a property. It is a guna. It is a dharma, right? It is an attribute. But how many sankhyas are there? How many numbers are there? The Vaisheshikas say only number one is eternal. Ekatva sankhya nitya. After eka, from two number onwards, all the numbers up to parardha, 18th number parardha is counted. Up to that, all are created. Number one is eternal, number two is produced. And there is again a technical process how number two is produced. Suppose I have two papers in my hand, this and this. And it is Udayana Charya again who has beautifully described the production of Dvitva, production of number two in his text called Lakshanavali. And interestingly, when my PhD viva was done, this was asked to me, can you explain the process of number two? And it is said that Nyaya and Vaisheshika, they agree upon most of the things. But there are three things on which there is no agreement. Dvitva is one of them. Dvitvetu pakajot pattau vibhage cha vibhagaje yasya na skhalita buddhi tam vai Vaisheshikam vidu. Vaisheshikas are disagreeable to Nyaya on three points. Number one, Dvitva. Number two is the production of number two is one of them. Pakajot pattav. The paramanus have paka, chemical action, and they change their properties. This theory is acceptable to both Nyaya and Vaisheshika. But according to Nyaya, it is pithara paka. The whole is baked. According to Vaisheshika, minutely each atom successively gets baked. According to them, Nayayikas, it is a simultaneous baking of the whole. According to Vaisheshika, it is the successive baking of every minute atom. This is Pākotpati. Vibhāge cha vibhāge I leave it, there is even more technical, but I come to Dvitva, because I have to explain Sankhya Vishesha. So, suppose I have two papers. First I see this, Ayame Kaha, that is okay. Ayame Kaha, that is also okay. But when I say dvitva, when I say ayamekaha, ayamekaha, there is a sense of duality which is generated in my mind, which is cognized by me in my intellect, and then I relate them. Ayamekaha, ayamekaha, tatra apeksha buddhi, relative cognition is generated in the mind of the cognizer, of the agent. And he says, Ayamekaha, Ayamekaha, Dvau Imau. They are two. So there is Dvitva. Dvitva is produced. Ekatva is Nitya. I am not quoting the verse, but those of you who are interested, Udayana has beautifully described the whole process of Dvitva Utpatti in his Lakshanavari. So the question arises, when creation started, there was no human being at that moment. The first diet is to be produced. Atoms are there, discrete atoms were there in the time of dissolution. When creation starts, who was there in whose apeksha buddhi, related cognition, this dvitvotpatti is possible? There was no human being. So we have to postulate that there was a conscious power in whose apeksha buddhi this dvitva is generated and the first Dvayanaka is God. So these are the eight arguments. Kaya, Ayojana, Dhriti, Pada, Pratyaya, Shruti, Vakya and Sankhya Vishesha. These eight arguments 
are able to prove the existence of God. Now, without knowing all the categories, God is also one of the subcategories. Actually, it's not even a primary category, neither in the Nyaya nor in the Vaisheshika. You can see 16 Padarthas, 7 Padarthas, but it is a subcategory under Atma. So, if we have to know all the Padarthas for being able to attain Nishrayasa, God is also to be known. God is to be known for many more persons. It is not a personal God for me, that matter. It is the concept of God and not the personal God to be worshipped that we are worshipping these days. So this rational approach to God, this is again a contribution of Nyaya. I briefly mention the contribution of Nyaya for the world today. Two or three things and I will conclude. Nyaya for the world today. First thing is that Nyaya gave us a rational approach, logical thinking. Pramanai Ratha Parikshanam Nyaya. Do not accept anything on its face. First you investigate, examine, and then only you accept. This approach in the whole of Indian tradition is given by Nyaya. All of them use it as a tool. Even against Nyaya they use it. But this is given, this is the contribution of Nyaya and Albadme later on connected with the Vaisheshika. Then methodology and tools for analysis. All these Trividha Chasya Shastrasya Pravritti, Chatasrishu Artha Vidhasu, Artha Tattvam Parisamapyate, Pramata, Pramana, Prameya and Prama, Uddesha, Lakshana and Pariksha, Anubandha Chatushtaya. Adhikari, Vishaya, Sambandha and Prayojana. Sambandha and Prayojana are category. Sambandha is a category in Vaisheshika. Prayojana is a category in Nyaya. Yamadhikritya pravartate tat prayojana. So without prayojana, nobody start activity. Therefore, prayojana has to be clarified. Methodology and tools were provided by Nyaya to the whole of system of Indian philosophical analysis and they are being used in all the schools. Then later on we had the development and growth of Buddhist Nyaya and Jaina Nyaya also. But all these basics were provided by Gautama in his Nyaya Sutra. Then there are the discussion of detailed discussion of fallacies. It's amazing, mm -hmm. Hitva Bhasas, five types and then many subtypes why fallacies are important? Because if you have to argue, the vyapti between Hetu and Sadhya has to be valid. In perception, there is less possibility of error. But in reasoning, in arguments, and these days you see, people are arguing and arguing without any rules. There were these set rules for arguing. And if you are arguing, there is this fallacy, Hetva Bhas. Sometimes they say it is Asiddha. Like Udayana begins his discourse, his discussion on this Ishwara Vada and he just entangles his opponent in the argument. He says, you believe in God or you don't? You believe in Veda or not? If you don't believe in Veda, then Veda is the Kriti of Ishwara. Okay. But if you don't believe in God, then how can you refute it? It is not there. Ashraya Siddha Hitva Bhas. When there is not a God, how can you refute it? For example, it was given Shashi Shringa. So it is Ashraya Siddha. Hitva Bhasas, the discussion of Hitva Bhasas is very, very important. Then, I would say there is this doubt. Sanshaya is the beginning of Nyaya. Doubt. I quoted yesterday, Sanshayite Arthe Nyaya Pravartha. Sanshaya. Doubt is the ground for Nyaya. So doubt, then there is dissent and disagreement. When we have doubt, means there are two persons. One is in favor and the other is dissenting. He is disagreeing. Dissent and disagreement, then the debate takes place. And for debate, the rules of debate and dialectics are again set. And then after debate, the decision is taken, Nirnaya, with the help of discourse analysis. Tarka and Nirnaya. Although Tarka is not a Pramana, 
but it is quoted as pramanaanugrahakah tarkah. Tarka is helping in the pramana. And it is said, tau e tau tarka nirnayau loka yatram vahatah. Tarka and nirnayau. Argument and decision. If you go on arguing and don't reach a conclusion, that is futile. So, tarka nirnayau loka yatram vahatah. Your life in the world goes with the help of these two, Tarka and Nirnaya, and both of these are explained in Nyaya with greater details. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the Abhava, discussion of Abhava, negation, not only postulation as a category, so many details about Abhava, but in many types of Abhava, and Abhava is also perceptible. This is another theory. Only four Pramanas. And every Padartha is given, the, for example, Dravya, some Dravyas are perceived, some are to be inferred, Gunas, those Dravyas which have perceptible qualities, their qualities will be perceptible, Pratyaksha Dravya, Gunaha will be Pratyaksha. So, what is this Abhava? Abhava is also Pratyaksha. Mimansa says Abhava is not Pratyaksha. They accept another Pramana, Anupadabhi. Nyaya accepts only four, and Abhava is given the scope for perception. So these are the contributions of Nyaya for the world today. And lastly, I quote Vatsyayana. You see, Nyaya Bhashya is beautiful. In Indian tradition, we have Patanjali's Mahabhashya on Vyakarana. We have Shabara's Bhashya on Mimansa. And we have Nyaya Bhashya of Vatsyayana. These Bhashyas are beautiful. Their language is so simple and they are explaining the theories precisely and briefly, cryptically mentioned by the Sutrakar. He says, what is God? What is Ishwar? Apta Kalpaschayam. God is the most reliable person. Apta Kalpaschayam Yatha Pita Apatyanam. Just as a father is a reliable person for the child. Child believes everything what his father tells him. And father here will include mother also. Yatha pita patyanam, tatha pitri bhuta ishvaro bhutanam. Just as a father is to his children, similarly Ishwara is to bhutanam, not praninam. Everything, bhuta is being, not the living being only. So Ishwara is, he also takes care of those which are inanimate. So bhutanam, use the term bhuta. Nacha. Atma kalpad anya kalpa sambhavati. Ishwara cannot be classified anywhere except Atman. Natavadasya buddhim vina kaschit dharmo linga bhutaha shakya upapadaitu. Asya buddhim vina. Without his knowledge, nothing can be explained. Agamacha and the scriptures say drashta buddha sarvagyata Ishwara iti. Ishwara is drashta, Ishwara is bodha, knower, Ishwara is drashta, seer, bodha, knower, sarvagyata, omnishyen, Ishwara. And one more thing which I can't resist my temptation to quote. In the last verse of Nya, last but one verse, after positing all these arguments, Udrena says, there will be still some people who will not believe in it is being targeted at his opponent. So he says, I first recite the verse. Ittyevam shruti niti samplava jalai bhuyo bhi rakshalite yesham naspada madhadhasi hridaye te shaila sadha. Even after so many arguments, so many scriptural statements, they are in the form of water. And I have tried to wash the hearts of those where you were not present. But even then, if they do not give place to you or in their heart, this means they are like shaila sarashaya. They are like stones, rocks. Kintu, kintu prastuta vipratipa vidhayo kyuchair bhavat chintakaha kale karunika tvayaiva kripaya te dharaniya Even then, I pray for them that, O oh karunika, O oh passionate, O oh compassionate God, your grace will only take them to the other shore.
a magnificent overview. And thank you so much for it. Uh, we would love to get into discussion, but there's a challenge. Uh, I've just been informed that Professor Sanjay Sarma very much plans to do the session this afternoon after Professor Patna's session. But he's been called to dinner with the visiting Defense Minister. So Rajnath Singh Ji is in Kuala Lumpur today. So at 5 o'clock, so he has a dinner with him. And as you know, he's two and a half hours ahead of us. So he would like to move his talk half an hour prior, which means that just doing the arithmetic, we have to break for lunch now, come back at 2 for your session. Would that be okay? Can people move? I can also be kind of reduced. I'm very happy to give half an hour. No, no, no. We can go over to that. And uh, so that we move it forward, as, or as in India, we say we pre code it by half an hour. Uh, so if that is acceptable to everybody, let's break for lunch now. We do your discussion also after Sanjay's talk, because it will be much longer than half an hour, that I can assure you. I have a hundred questions, but... Uh, I'm not sure I can answer all of them. No, no, but uh, so we want to leave, so we don't want to do it in 10 minutes, that's for sure. Uh, so let's wait till we come back after lunch. Let's break for lunch now. Two o'clock sharp. But is the lunch ready? Sure, sure. Lunch one o'clock. Yeah, yeah. So it will take us ten minutes to get there. The lunch will be ready for us. And uh, two o'clock sharp, we start because we want to be on time for uh, making sure that we don't uh, that Sanjay does, is not late for his. Yes, Sanjay provided me the books. I didn't have to carry them. Please. Yes, yes. I just carried my books. Excellent. So we'll see you at 2 p.m. sharp. Okay. We can also walk over here.